Welcome back to another edition of Flight Tying for Beginners with Jim Mashura. Today we're going to tie a... This this fly is a little bit tougher, a little bit harder, but it's still a very good uh, pattern to learn. And this is my Sulfur Emerger Cripple. We're going to make a little variation on this. I usually tie this with Snowshoe Rabbit Foot and... We're going to change the, the wing material, which would be the snowshoe rabbit foot. We're going to change that to a light colored elk hair. The hook that I have in a vise, this is a standard dry fly hook, a size 14. I'm going to use a cream thread. I'm going to start out by putting a base of thread down. We're going to go actually go all the way to the rear of the hook. We want to get a nice uh, base of thread when we tie in the elk hair. If you have a bare hook it tends to spin more. Not saying that it won't spin with the thread but it spins more if you have a bare hook. I'm going since I'm at the back I'm going to put my rib in first because that's nice and stiff and it will stay out of our way and this is a extra fine copper wire and it rolled to the other side not a big deal and then we're going to come up to one quarter of the way from the eye as if we went halfway and then brought it back half of that. Now for the wing I have a this was actually an elk hawk. It's got some nice light colors on there. May have even been bleached. I'm not sure. It's been so long since I had this. And the nice thing about this particular one what I like about it, you buy a new one, it probably won't do this. You'll probably have to cut the hair off. But I'm just going to take a small bunch of them. We're going to put them in the hair stacker so this isn't going to be a problem. And this one, I'm seriously, I've had this probably 20 years. I'm going to grab them. And I can just pluck them right off there, which is nice. Because you get a whole bunch of dubbing from the under fur. I'm going to trim most of that off. I'm going to take it way down here into the light color. Now I'm going to put that in my hair stacker. Because the tips is all we're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and stack that. Lift the tube a little bit and now we take it out in the direction we want the tips to be pointing which is forward now I have my wing and we're going to tie this on and we want that wing to be about the length of the hook shank if you transfer make sure you hold them tight. If you transfer fingers to fingers a lot, make sure you hold those fibers tight. You're going to take a loose loop, pull it down, and then put a little bit more pressure as you're going towards the rear. You can see they spun a little bit, no, no problem at all. I said they might spin even on the threaded part, the threaded shank. And just imagine if that shank was bare. But here's the part when you're coming back is the necessity for the threaded shank. Because if it was, this whole thing would be spinning. The whole clump would be spinning if you didn't have that threaded shank. We're going to bring that back. Cut it at a nice taper there. That rib is going to the far side. And now for the tail, 
actually it's going to be the shuck and the rear one half of the body is this is a boot lace that I took apart look in my material section you'll learn how to do that this is a nicer dark brown boot lace after you take it apart I took it down to this really thin segment of it I'm going to tie that in hanging that shuck off the back short short way if you have it longer you just simply put a, take a couple of turns and then like I just pulled it too long we'll go ahead and adjust that after I get a couple of turns on there we're gonna fold it back and we're going to tie that in now we have our tail and now we have our rear section of the body which was as actually going to be like representing a shuck I'm gonna go ahead and tie this on wrap this on that wire out of my way there there we go and you actually it actually doesn't matter about how far you go with this actually gonna go back there a little bit cover cover up those spaces that I had and like I said you can bring this up far you don't have to go all the way to the wing we're gonna tie that in give it two or three wraps you can bring it back and give it another two or three wraps trim that off and now if you went too far just bring your thread back Got one piece of elk there one there we go now we're going to take the rib and we're going to counter wrap that oh that's not counter wrapping you have to come towards you if your thread wraps away from you there we go put one around the tail and that was just so I don't pull the tail around and we'll bring that up and we're gonna give that a couple of wraps extra fine wire you can just pull that right off now we're going to dub the body with the sulfur orange dubbing when you're taking this is super fine when you're using dry fly dubbing the amount you use should actually float in the air like a piece of dust that's how small of an amount you should take see how small that is and tying these emerger cripples you can actually get away with a larger size because the back section is representing the shuck so he's halfway out of the shuck so the fly could actually be almost twice as long when I get to the wing I'm going to lift everything Gotta read. and we're gonna wrap in front of it just so that wing goes back go ahead and press on it and it'll give you a little bit of a nice little bit of a compare done there one crazy long one out the back here now we're going to make a dubbing loop take my dubbing loop twister you simply 
place it on there and when you come up now you have a loop that try to get that thread pretty close you can go ahead and cross it over And now I'm just going to let that hang. Well, first I'm going to take my 100% beeswax, stream side leaders. Now for the hackle, we're going to use the CDC. This is kind of a creamish, a little bit yellow. When there's a bunch of them together, they look more yellow, but this is a cream to yellow uh, CDC. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. And I'm going to place the top half on top. Now I'm going to use my dubbing block going to place them with the hackle right on the slice you can't really see it because it's yellowish and I have a yellow bob a yellow block if you make your own I would suggest that you use a blue block just like most of the fly tires you see online on YouTube they wear a blue shirt I have a gray shirt on now but it contrasts nicely a blue shirt contrasts everything nicely because there's not many, not many times that we actually use blue in fly tying so we have that in there and then we remove the bodkin needle we take our smooth chip clip, place that on there. I like to squeeze down the bottom here and pull that out. Now we're going to take our scissors and we're going to trim that as close to the stems as we can. Don't worry if you don't get it perfectly on the stems see how much I left there because the CDC's are very long now we're going to take our CDC I'm going to open the loop put our chip clip entirely in it you can see it's all entirely in it slide it up when it slides off the chip clip then we take the chip clip off and usually I just go ahead and spin it, but I'm going to show you by just turning it by hand. And what we're making is a nice little CDC hackle. Going to get that bobbin out of the way. Now we can take the... Give it a few more spins there. Now we're going to take the with the dubbing loop attached still move everything to the one side and continue stroking it towards the rear as you're going it like said you might have a little bit of trouble at first with the dubbing loop but or with the, yeah with the dubbing loop and the dubbing block but it's worth it's worth it once you get it we're going to looks kind of like a mess right now but we're just going to continue wrapping that and if you find you have too much CDC just put less CDC into your dubbing block now I'm going to tie that off it's okay if it encroached on the eye there a little bit
the CDC, for those that don't know what CDC is, it's called Col de Canard, is actually the feathers around the preening clan of a waterfall, a duck or a goose. So the preening gland produces oil and that's what they keep themselves waterproof with. So these feathers are really oily. Now I'm going to take everything and I'm going to hold it to the rear. And we'll tie off that head and I'm moving back some as you can see. I'm going to Hold everything there. I'm going to hit that with my flame because it's a little fuzzy. There we go. Make sure I got that eye open. Yep. Now I can take my whip finish. Just give it three wraps to the whip finish. Go ahead and use the poke and snip cuticle trimmer. Now you can break off or with CDC if there's individual fibers, you can actually use your scissors without making it too much of a right angle. Now I'm going to take my dubbing brush, I'm going to dub that out a little bit, or brush that out a little bit, because when we wrap the CDC, it most likely caught fibers underneath, so we'll just brush that out a bit. You can even run it up over the wing, it's not going to hurt it. You could leave those long, or you can trim them off. Now I'm going to take a little bit of head cement, clean my brush off well, and another thing, I use Sally Hansen's, it's just clear nail polish, hard as nails, and when you buy it, cut the brush to a nice fine point. And I know I didn't get any in the eye so I don't have to run a feather through it. And here we have an elk hair wing sulfur triple emerger. Take your time and get this one right it is a very very good fly it's the most vulnerable stage of the mayflies uh, existence he's on the surface still struggling struggling to get out of that shuck and this is what you're gonna catch them with so I hope that you learned something from this video I hope that you would subscribe to my channel please refer me to your friends Please visit my sponsors if you'd like to purchase this fly or any other flies that I tie. You can go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym. And if you don't see the fly on my page, you can send me a personal message and tell me what you want. And I'll help you out. Okay. And most of all, I thank you very much for watching my videos.